Hello, welcome, what is good everyone? Tone here, and today we are gonna be taking a look at Rogue Voltage. Uh, this is just a demo currently. It is due out in 2023 for the full release. I didn't see any more specific information than that. So anytime in the next six months or so, uh, we should expect this. Um, but yeah, this game is a new roguelike I'm checking out, and the Steam blurb says it's a roguelike deck builder meets automation game. Construct your own skills by wiring up modules, generate and manage energy, manipulate the timeline, beat procedural threats, and try to get the power back in a world where time is out of joint. And I just checked this out. I just played through the tutorial, which is what my continue run thing is here, and had a lot of fun checking it out, actually. This game is really cool. A lot of cool mechanics and stuff going on here. Um, so I am going to jump right into it. Um, these keep resetting every time I open the demo. Let's do that. And we're just going to jump into a fresh, clean run here. Uh, before I do get started, I'll use give my usual reminder. If you guys want to check out uh, or support me and the channel here, I do so over at patreon.com slash tonehack. And uh, I just did a... One of the exclusives I put up there is I do these first first looks where I check that's where I play the tutorial here and post that there. So uh, I go in like completely fresh to check those out and then I come and do these uh, actual first looks in the main feed here to uh, give like a, a better, more concise summary. But if that's something you guys are interested in, too, sometimes we deep dive into like more stuff than I would get into on something like this, go on tangents and stuff. This is a small perk, one thing that you could get through the Patreon. Um, but yeah, let's jump into uh, the actual campaign here and a run of this game, which I've not seen yet. I've only done the tutorial. Um, we get to pick some characters here. It looks like we have two available and four unlocked. Four locked. Uh, chapter 1 Blackout. It's a grain festival. Nana Slopper was about to put a... Gra Gravioactive turkey in the oven when the plasma meter hits zero. Someone should go and investigate what caused the ruckus this time. Um, so there's some kind of gravity thing going on. The world is an apocalypse. Uh, the time is out of order. Some stuff going on here. So we have a bunch of difficulties. I'll stick to beginner for now. And we will start the adventure. All right, uh, looks like we jump into the stage one, the sewers. After the initial grab wave, many survivors set up camp in the sewers, only to discover that there is also here the time distortions had taken effect. Some sections of concrete had aged a thousand years in a second, become brittle and crumbled. Others became creamy like on the day they were poured. Lots of time effects going on. Uh, these look like tips here. If you turn a line turn, sometimes the smallest move is to not activate a generator. We'll get into that. Um, so it looks like we get a node map here. Uh, we have combats with swords. This is probably a shop of some sort. Uh, events and a boss slash elite. And then this is our camp uh, we're going for at the end. But we only have one choice here, so we'll jump right in to combat. So let me give a explainer of what is going on here um, and what the game is all about. So. Each character has a uh, module rack, and I it, it makes me wonder if this is inspired by like module synthesizers in any ways. Because when I was seeing this and reading about it in the tutorial, that's like what came to mind for me. Um, but basically, you have uh, power generators. Is what that's what this is, and then you can connect wires to things to send power different places. Uh, you can modify the power, and then you could utilize the power. And then so every turn on each one of your characters, they get to uh, run like one, you know, circuit path through their module rack. And then that will create effects that they can apply on the battlefield. And then each one of our characters has their own module rack here. And then we have a global backpack here um, that we can put stuff in here. Um, and then we have our enemies here. We can right click and see what these guys do. We have some grav gnats. Um, they have a grav sting. Uh, deals one damage and inflicts one. Uh, I forget what that is called, but uh, this basically is like a time delay on our turn. So this game also has a turn 
thing up here. Um, and it this actually reminds me of like a, a rhythm game, but it's like turn-based. So uh, basically you can see the turn order and then back here is when they act again. And so this uh, gives plus one on the turn. So if they hit someone, they're gonna delay us in here. Uh, so basically what's going on here. And then there are effects that you wanna line up on your opponent's turns to take advantage of and stuff like that. But you can see what the turns are going on here. Um, so we have Jackson here is uh, their turn. And then this guy's gonna go, and then these guys will go in the same turn. Um, our characters tend to go first. So I'm assuming whatever's on the top acts first and goes from top to bottom. So what does uh, Jackson here have at our disposal uh, to use for our turn? Oh cool, let's remove all wires button. Skip turn button. Um, so we have a generator and we can generate a red and a green wire. So we have a decelerator plus one, inflicts target with grab charge plus. So that delays them. So that's all we can do with our red output. And then we have a blaster, which deals damage and a potion factory. So this creates like a consumable. So if we're gonna be manipulating their time, we wanna see what our other character can do here on their turn as well. We have Johnson here, who just has a purple generator. Exhaustion one, activation sets back the next turn by one. I don't think I've seen that one before. Interesting, this says exhaustion two. Hmm, we'll have to see what that does. And we have the soul sensor. So sensors generate energy based on effects. Um, so this is gonna generate energy whenever a combatant dies. Um, and then what do we have here? We have a blaster, deals damage, and a blade module plus one. So this deals damage to all enemies on the same time step as the owner. Um, so you can see when I hover over this, it shows you uh, an effect on this bar. So this will affect this guy that's on here. So that's one thing we're manipulating the turn order is gonna have an impact. So if we could push this guy here, I think we could win this in one turn, which is why I wanted to look at this. Um, so this does a grab charge, but this is plus one. Actually gonna put them back two, which is too much. Fortunately, I don't think we need to do this to win. So here's what we're gonna do. All right. And I'm not gonna go too deep into the thinking process here while we're still trying to learn, but we're gonna wire this up. Um, wait, no, I don't care about that one actually. We're gonna wire up the blaster. I don't think I wanna decelerate anyone. Actually, I'll decelerate you so you don't get to attack us. And there's also this plasma converter. So plasma is like a currency we can spend in camp. Um, so if I have any extra energy, I can put it through there. We're gonna use that though. And then this guy's gonna end up, what does this thing do? Converter. So it turns purple into red. Okay. It holds the energy until the end of the owner's turn. Okay. I think this is gonna work. So I had to figure out my whole party to figure out like this turn cluster right here. So let's uh, see if my planning worked out here. So this has a charge of one and these have a plus one on them and modifies that, but the, the charge is the output. So that's why this is gonna do two. And I wanna push back this gnat. Okay. And then this is the blaster. And then I also wanna shoot that one. We got to do one damage to them. Now it comes up to this guy's turn. Oh, this only happens during our turn. It looks like uh, it didn't generate any. Oh wait, no one's died yet. That's right. I'm gonna do this. I got one energy. I'm gonna kill this guy, which should power this up. Converts to red, powers this up. Blade module hits the guys in line with our turn. And voila, good fight. So, <laughs> That was a cool little puzzle there. And, and that's like, this is like a really cool, uh, clever and creative system for this game is like figuring this out. So I'm really interested to see 
and you get lots of these modules, like more complex enemies, you're shifting time forward and backward. It just seems like there's like a lot of possibilities here. Um, so I just wanted to go through that quickly, but um, I can try to explain more about what's uh, thought process behind some of this stuff as we go on. Uh, but let's see, drag the module of your choice into your rack. Um, so we got some loot here. It looks like we can, oh, we can take nothing to get a plasma or we can spend a plasma to reroll. All right, so what do we have here? The grav sensor generates one energy whenever a gravitational charge is applied to a player character. Um, overload will receive shock after activation. I don't know what that does. Um, so we can apply a gravitational charge here to power this. That's one thing we can do. Uh, protective screen plus one applies shield to all allies. Duration is energy times three. Fragile can only be activated once per battle. And it uh, reduces incoming damage by one. Okay. The duration, I assume, is how many ticks on the, the timeline. And we have the merger, merges two currents. So we have a red and a blue input and a green output. Interesting. I wonder if you have to have inputs from both sides or if I could have one input here and just basically acts like a converter. I'm kind of digging the graph sensor. This seems like something we can activate a lot. Take that. All right. On to the next fight. The Gravnat. And then a bomb thrower abilities the time bomb plays the time bomb module on one of your tracks. Interesting. So now enemies are putting stuff on our the module. Oh, one of our racks, not tracks. They're gonna put something on our rack. Interesting. Wonder how that works. I wonder if we have to like send it a current to deactivate it. Otherwise, we take damage or something. That's a really cool effect. Okay, so. This is a green output. So you can't use that at all. So it's gonna have to go here. And I can use it. Okay, so you can only have one input on any of these things or one wire to each input. So I could either use this to start gaining some plasma or I can use it for the potion factory. I think we'll use it for the potion factory to get some potions going. Okay, so we're actually currently lined up to this. So we can kill this guy with the blade module. I think we can do the exact same thing we did last turn, honestly. It looks like it'll work on this turn. Except I can push this guy into your lines. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna skip this. I'm gonna go straight to the blade module. I wonder if I can move this between turns and use it on both of our boards. That'd be too strong, right? We're gonna try it though. So I'm gonna push the gnat back so you, you can hit both of them with the blade module which will kill both of them on your turn then ideally i hook this up to the plasma generator but i want to see if i could also you don't even need that try this We're going to decelerate the mat. Plasma. It's locked, okay. Well, that's good for learning. Locked until end of turn. But yeah, I think it would have been more valuable over here, but that's fine. Now, if you just run, you're going to blade module both of those guys because they're on the same timer as you. 
Nice. So I could have gotten one extra plasma if I hooked it up to this, but that's fine. Let's see, we're learning here. All right, drag the module of your choice into your rack. What's our loot here? Decelerator plus one. Okay, so that's the same thing as this. Although this one is fragile. Okay, so we have the same modules, but they get different modifiers on them. That's really interesting. This one can only be activated once per battle. Requires a purple, which I guess this can do. Uh, this fracture sensor um, generates energy whenever a module de is destroyed. Converter. This converts green to universal white output. That sounds strong. Not quite yet, but I think that's strong in general. I'm going to grab that. Okay. I feel like we're supposed to just keep doing combats. I don't know what this is, though, so I'm going to go here. It's a vending machine. Okay, I figured it was a shot, but I haven't seen this before. So I figured it was too early to go here because we don't have much to spend. Although I guess I can buy anything here except for this. This is all stuff we've seen before. Here's a healing potion. Merger. Get like a stronger red. Feed into the blade module or something. I would need a, I would need a green. Seems to be hard to use. Um, this says crust prevents it from activating, but the first incoming energy will break the crust. And this is an accelerator. Also fragile, can be activated only once per battle. That's like too many factors being applied to it. The potion might be good, but I haven't taken damage yet. We have a potion generator I think we're gonna be able to use eventually. So I'm just gonna skip this shop. For now. Um, in event, we discover a healing station. Heals both characters by one. We're at full health. Alright, another combat. So th those were two wasted nodes for us. I wanted to see what the shop was, though, so I'm glad we took this path. Okay. This is interesting. Well, I'm in line with the bomb guy, so I think I need to just use the blaster module here. Um, this generates energy whenever a combatant dies. I guess I should bring the plasma converter over there. This is character lock, so I can't take it anywhere else, but that's fine. So we're gonna connect these two so we can generate plasma on this turn when they die. Looks like everything else is set up. Cool. Now it's your turn. I think we want to decelerate you so that you line up with Johnson over here, which is what this is doing. And then, okay, so, okay, this only is factors in when it is applied to a player character. I'm gonna do this. So we're gonna generate a potion. Now this says higher energy leads to higher constructed module. Overload will receive shock after activation. I'm curious what that does. I'm gonna push the flyback on the timeline. Plus one shock. shock do can't be activated this turn okay so it's like a cooldown this as well interesting i'll take that out because this isn't doing anything this turn 
Right, I think we just run this though. That should kill the the gnat, the fly, whatever this thing is. Cool. Loot. Drag the module of your choice into your rack. Another accelerator. This one's fragile. Once per battle. Uh, another converter. I already have one up here. I do have two sources of green current. This is not going to waste. Oh, here's our healing potion. Heals the owner. Trauma sensor generates one energy whenever a player character takes damage. Um, this has overload shock after activation. It's like once every other turn or something. I like the idea of the accelerator. I want to grab this. It's a little bit more turn manipulation. All right, onto the boss fight. Um, some of the stuff in this game is this top bar. There are different like ranks based on how fast you complete it. So this is like gold, I guess, this yellow line. It'll eventually turn different colors um, and that determines like, I guess the quality of the rewards you get and stuff. Um, but I don't think we've even seen this go into a different color now. Uh, but this is like a, a boss of some sort. So let's see what we got here, the boss crocodile. Um, they deal one damage to all enemies and inflicts one module each with a grab recoil, um, activate, which means activating it inflicts us with plus two. Okay. It says exhaustion activation sets back the next turn by one. And there's also a grab pylon. In the early days of gravitonics, people would use these to power their homes. They tended to discharge when they weren't properly grounded. These ones do not look grounded. All right, abilities. Uh, chrono detection passive. Bills might whenever the turn order is changed. Zap removes all might to deal that much damage to the enemy. Um, grab transfer removes plus one from a target and puts it into another target. So my question is if changing turn order is just every time you modify where someone is on here, or if it only means turn order is changed if someone goes in a different order. Um, but this thing looks tricky. This only has two health though. Can I get Johnson to line up with these guys? Doesn't look like it. But I can kill this thing with my blaster, and then I just have to deal with the crocodile. Let's just try and do that. If I slow down the crocodile, then they'll line up with Johnson's next turn. That would apply to either of these guys, actually. Hmm. But I think we're gonna kill this with the blaster and then work on the crocodile. Or does it make sense to kill this with the blade thing? So many decisions. So I'm gonna hook at the blaster here. This is gonna generate the current. Yes. I'll just use a generator potion. Is that or a plasma? I have a plasma with it. Actually, we can probably do better on the plasma. Maybe? I don't know. 
you're just gonna do this. Actually gonna generate plasma with you. All right, let's try this. All right, so it is your turn. Decelerate you. And I'm gonna blast the pylon. Oh, we didn't generate a charge here. Because this is only when I just uh, grab charges applied to player character. That's fine. Forgot about that though. Uh, and now we're just gonna blast you, which is gonna cause this to generate energy. Yeah, this works. Now we want to use this cooldown. Basically, all we can do. We're going to do two damage to the crocodile. And then they're going to get their attack. Interesting. They did it to the first module on each of our racks. I wonder if that was just a coincidence. Um, so, activation this turn inflicts uh, the owner with plus two. Okay. We do want to activate that on you now. Plasma here. Try this. We're gonna decelerate you to line up your blade module, the crocodile. We're gonna blast you. So that generated two plasma. I guess that's because I used two to uh turn offset. Interesting. I thought it would just be one like per instance, but I guess it also de depends on the magnitude. So now we're going to use the blade module here. And that's probably all we're going to do. Uh, damage to you. Now something we haven't seen yet is equilibrium up here. Permanent storm that circles the surface of the Earth. Uh, it levels local imbalances of gravitational charge. So this halves our positive uh, time delay here, and it removes our negative and deals damage based on it. Whenever this comes in, and now you can see the different um, like reward levels here. So unless I can kill this guy this turn, it looks like we're not going to get the gold. Um, but they only have two health, so we should be able to get the next one. I do two damage this turn. Doesn't look like it. want to delay anyone further. Probably not. So if I'm not going to... I want to kill you on this guy's turn no matter what, because he can do two damage with the blade module. So I think I should put my resources here into... Is this going to do anything? Why is this smoking? I already used it once and it's cracked, so it can only be used once per battle. I'm just gonna 
do utility stuff with you, I think. I don't think this is going to do anything, but I'm curious. Oh, it did work. Was it smoking because of the grav recoil? It must have been. Alright, so we're gonna use the blade module here. Which generates one energy when a combatant dies. It doesn't look like it can use meaningfully. I'm just gonna hit this. Blade module should take this out. And there's also, if the battle takes too long, there's a storm that does something. I haven't seen that yet, so I didn't read what it, exactly what it did. Uh, let's see, loot. Drag the module of your choice into your rack. Accelerator with crust and fragile. Uh, Aeolian Cell is charged with energy at the end of combat. Stores one energy through turns and battles. So this is like a free energy at the start of each combat, it sounds like. Um, amplifier, it's fragile once per battle activation. Plasma Crepitation activation uses up one plasma and it adds one energy. Uh, I don't think I want that using our plasma. I mean, I guess that's a good way to use plasma, but... Plasma is generally used outside of combat, so I'm cu curious to see what all we could do with it. This seems good enough to take. And we'll continue. Alright, on to camp. Um, so in camp you can heal. There's like some unlock stuff here. I don't know if this... These unlocks like persist between runs or if they're only for the run, but let's see here. So you just unlocked the campfire, it gave us loot. This is a green amplifier that also has grav recoil and overload. It's amplifier plus one that uses plasma. Accumulation sensor generates one energy whenever a module of type storage module is charged. We have this is the only one we have, and that doesn't really work well for that, I don't think. This probably doesn't persist between com uh, combats. This amplifier seems pretty good, though. I guess we're gonna grab this. Uh, my backpack is full. Probably wants to go on your board. Okay. Should use these healing potions. I'll try to use those instead of healing here, I think. Campfire. Scrapyard requires hangar. Here's the hangar. We can open this too. Loot, drag the module of your choice into your rack. We get one more loot here. Here's a storage module. It can be charged or discharged. Incoming energy is amplified by plus one. Oh, so you only have to connect one side of this to decide how you want to use it. This seems pretty good. It doesn't have any negative modifiers or anything. A uh, vuln module inflicts target enemy with vulnerable. Um, vulnerable means incoming damage is amplified by one. Duration is energy times three. That's pretty cool. Uh, factory sensor generates one energy whenever a module is constructed. I like I like both of these first two uh, quite a bit. This has a red output. It's gonna be used for the blade module, but not actually because I don't have a green to charge it with. get used here for the decelerator. I think I like this one the most, but my current build doesn't have like a good way to use it. I think we'll take the vulnerable module, which is a, another way for Slopper to Slopper Jackson here to do more damage. And they, they don't they're more of like a utility spec than a damage spec. I 
wonder what these do other than just give us like a loot upgrade. If I had more plasma, I could unlock the scrapyard next. All right, let's go to uh, stage two, the crystal caverns. Got your boots, we're heading down. It's impulses of grab charge that are reflecting off the cave walls in here. Unfortunately, and thanks to that, this environment provides a constant supply of sustenance for any strange creature that's adapted to living off of it. We also got a change in the soundtrack here. Ooh, look at this, these nodes. Uh, what do we got here? Protozoans. Membrane attack, one damage to an enemy, may remove positive uh, time shift to heal itself by one. Divide, if its HP is even, it splits into two. Oh, and these actually both start with different hit points. Grab spill, looks all enemies with plus one on defeat. These are both the same. What is this? Impulse. A burst of grab energy or grab charge it is reverberating off the cavern walls. Interesting. It, it, this game has like a really clever turn based combat system. I'm really digging it. I like all the turn shifting and stuff you can do and how lining up stuff is important. Very, very cool. Um, so how are we going to handle this combat? You're not hitting anyone with this. Use an accelerator to speed someone up. I speed you up, you would be going at the same time as the protozoan next turn. That's the two damage, two life protozoan, so we can then kill you with the blade module next turn. That would require using this. Which would be nice so we can kill you before you split. Splitting would actually make you harder to kill, even if you had up with one health, I think. Maybe we'll try to do that. And if we do accelerate ourselves, we're going to want to finish the combat before the Eucalibrium, because this makes negative grab spike deal damage to us. Although this will undo it anyways. Okay. I'm seeing a plan. None of this does anything yet. Wait, how come I got knocked back one more? Activation sets back the next turn by one. Whoops. Actually, killed our whole plan. Actually, I don't want to use it on anyone. Could I cancel? Wait, what did I just do? Oh, but you're going to get slowed down? I think this will work out anyways, but you're going to get a turn first, which is unfortunate. So I think I'm going to need to do damage to you so you don't split. I guess I'll just speed you up. Oh, move to the other board. I, I right clicked it, so that just transfers it to the other character. It's weird that it let me do that during my turn. But that's what happened there. <clears throat> Okay. 
Uh, this guy's going this turn. Ooh. I'm gonna delay this guy by two so that he ends up in here. And then I can maybe hit both of them with this guy. I, I think more stuff is gonna shift people around though. This guy only removes positive gravity. Oh, that's why even the description of this said that there's grav shifts reverberate up these walls and then the life forms feed on it. That's exactly what these guys are doing. This is grav shifting and these guys do damage based on it. That's actually pretty cool. All right, so what all do we have here? This is the amplifier. I think I just want to shift you back too, so you're here. And we have a green to use. I can actually use the blaster to kill one of these guys right now, which I think I should do. I can do this, do that. That's gonna send two current, which will be two damage to kill you. That works for me. So we're going to decelerate you. And then two damage. I'm going to kill you. Whoa. What just happened? This is plus four. Wow, that really affected things. You're at plus six right now. You died at inf impacted enemies, okay. For some reason I was thinking that was just gonna offset it by one. Now we are two behind you here. This is out of commission. I can't get in time step with you, so I'm just gonna. If I shoot you with the blaster once, you're gonna be even and you're gonna split. Which is probably okay. Also, you're on the impulse next turn, which I think we want you to not be. Although I can't really do anything about that right now. We'll, we'll let you split. Seems okay to me. Oh, I didn't take advantage of this. Oh, this actually, it's holding the charge still. This is one. Um, let's have you activate the potion then with that, if that'll work. This got charged up when our guys uh, got slowed down. Okay, so you're healed. Right, dividing. Okay, a lot just happened. This guy damaged someone and removed their grab shift and healed. Did the, did the divided one not carry the grab shift over? It looked like not, maybe? That happened pretty fast. I need a combat log. Okay. So when they divide... This guy was at one health, but he had a max of two, which is interesting. Okay, so you're not doing anything with the blade module, so we just do this again. And just kill this. Although I should kill this guy 
Yeah, because you're going to act soon. This guy can get killed later, maybe? Seems like it, because you're going to go first. Alright, this has a charge on it. We're gonna just heal you. Actually gonna generate another potion. This has a charge. Wait. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do damage, right? I need to kill this thing. Am I using the decelerator at all? Shouldn't need to, right? So this can activate the potion to heal us. Okay. I like this. That one. Ooh, time shifted. Uh oh. Now I'm gonna get hit, hit pushed back by like six. Oh, but the equilibrium fixed it. Okay. Man, this is a complex turn system. I love it. Um. So this has stored energy, which I, I'm just gonna use for plasma. Have two sword energy after I kill you. I think it has a cap of one though. No, it went up to two. Sick. Wow, I love how like complex the our modules and stuff are getting. Uh, let's see, loot. Drag the. So I, I got bronze tier loot here because that fight took so long for us. Uh, drag the module of your choice into your rack. Uh, converter. Universal to universal. That's pretty good. Storage cell. What's the input? It doesn't have an input, but it has a basis of, a base of two. It's destroyed. So this is a one-time use two energy, which is actually pretty useful. Here's a big healing potion. It adds plus three. This is once per battle. This is once ever. This is really flexible, though. But we're getting to the end of this stage, right? So I feel like this might give us, like, oomph to use on a boss or something. Take this. Like a consumable. I'm curious to try it out. Oh no, we just started. We're not, <laughs> we're not near the end of the stage. I take that back. We're just getting started. On the Crystal Caverns, at least. Hmm, inflicts a module with crust. Activation sets them back by three. Resonant crystal. Raises might whenever crust is broken. I, I like these synergies. This combat is really cool. Crystal resonance inflicts two modules with self encrusting. Means it receives crust after activation. And if you guys remember, crust means we have to apply a voltage to remove the crust before we can even do anything. Uh, zap removes all might to deal with uh, that much damage to an enemy. Okay. Okay, and might has a cap. That's good to know. I think the last one had a cap of one, so it looked like it could charge indefinitely, but now there's clearly like a cap of two here. Okay. These each have three health, which is a bit of an awkward number for us, because usually we're doing like two damage. This is an amplifier. Which if I get lined up, I can do uh, three health with that. I 
Okay. Jackson is going. What are we trying to do here, Jackson? You are going to be in the, the impulse. This is exhaustion, which is going to push us out of it this turn. So that's turned back by one. I don't know if that's already being accounted for. It is. Oh, interesting. Okay. But don't use this. I won't be in the impulse. I think I should do. I can probably line one of these enemies up to be in line with me on the following turn. That'll knock me back into the impulse, though, if I end up using this. Interesting. Or I can just use this and then modify my speed another way. I think this is going to be really annoying. Killing this before its turn would be quite nice. This says modular, what does that mean? Is it because it affects our modules? Are they going to use this every turn? I wonder. Man, this is a complex turn. How do we want to play this out then? If I make something vulnerable, then I can kill them with two damage modules. I guess the the other big question is, can I kill either of these guys before they act? I definitely can. I can do three damage right now using like this amplifier and my blaster and then just your blaster. I kill one of them. Can I line it up so I kill both of them somehow? I feel like there might be a way. delay this guy by three or two two or three honestly if I wanted to and I couldn't delay this guy by one right one or two accelerator I almost want like a like a filter where I can say like I want any, everything that applies grab charge and have it like highlight all my pieces or something. This is where I'm getting at with this because I feel like the the modules become messy out of like necessity because your backpack is so small. Like I'm not I'm not like really using these. They're kind of just like adding clutter, which makes it a little harder to parse the turns. But also add, adds to like the junky aesthetic, like the junk aesthetic of the game, so I don't hate it. Can I push one of these guys into the time storm and kill the other one, and then try to kill the other one before their impulse comes into effect? I wonder if that's the strategy. Like the crystal ant. 
can get pushed into here really easily just by doing this. Then I can do two damage to the pylon like this. And then I do one damage to the pylon like this. Generate a plasma, maybe. Just use this first so that you don't end up in the storm. All right, let's let's wing it a bit here. I've been I've spent enough time uh, figuring out this turn. I'll push you back there. Blast you. Blast you. Dead zone. There to plasma. Now it is your turn. We're dodging the impulse. I can go ahead and use this now to do one damage to you, I guess. You're going to get delayed. Somewhere, right? Before you even get to act. By four. One, two, three, four. So you'll get to act. Or we can almost kill them. some damage, I guess. Blast it into the past. For the future. Somewhere else. Okay. You're attacking in a turn. Jackson gets to go first. I don't think you can do enough damage. Oh, no, but we delay you, and then he kills. Okay. So we're going to do that. Yes. Um, generate a potion, I guess. I like how there's like these utility things you can use to get value out of like extra resources you have. Hit you with the, the blade module for the kill. And then let this power up the plasma. Boom, I like it. Because now we're in the same time step. So we, we got silver tier loot this time. Uh, merger, purple, and red. Or that's blue. Blue and red. Not much of a combination for blue and red. Except for with this, I guess. But then it outputs green. That's not that useful for us. Um, decelerator plus one with a green input. Tear sensor generates energy when a player is healed. I don't have a lot of, I don't do a lot of healing. I wonder if this is like higher charge based on the amount of healing I do though, which could be quite good. Maybe I'd heal more often just to activate this. I'm not like hugely into any of these. I feel like the decelerator could be good. I'd want to be able to use it in the same time as this. I guess I can. All right. 
So we can do like a double deceleration. This is only once per battle, but that's cool. Oh, combat. Uh, let's call this one here actually though, because current run is getting a little long and then we'll wrap this up in a part two. So it looks like we'd save and exit the run. So we'll leave this here for now. This game is really cool. I'm uh, really looking forward to this. Um, I'm hoping the demo has some good replayability because I want to play this more than just this one time actually, uh, currently. Uh, I just think the combat system here is really clever. Uh, it's really, it's not like super complex, but it's complex enough to like really get my like gears turning and uh, it really makes you like want to stop and think through the turns and stuff, which I really like in a turn-based game like this. A lot of clever and cool stuff going on here. Um, so really excited to check out more of this, but we'll leave that for next time. Uh, do check out the uh, links in the comments below. You can find my Patreon if you want to show support there. We're at patreon.com slash tonehack. Uh, you can also find the first first look of this game I did that's on Patreon where I checked out the tutorial. And uh, I do that for a lot of other games as well. And you can also find the Discord there if you want to come hang out with me and the rest of the community there. It's always a good time. Um, but with all that said, I am out here for now. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all for the next one. Take it easy, everyone.